how does the whole spiritual aspect of God's timing work into this? Because I feel like that's something within Christianity that people struggle with, you know, I, and I know at different points in times I have as well, where I feel that God has asked me to do something or given me an idea for what he wants me to do in the future. And I've taken action right away only to find out it wasn't the right time to do it. And then I've also been on the opposite foot where God's led me to do something. And I was like, all right, so you told me I'm going to wait for the right timing only to miss it because I didn't take action. How do we decipher when is the appropriate time to or not to take action? Well, unfortunately, none of us have a global, global clock that lets us see eternity and, and um, present existence. So it's hard for us to predict the moment when we need to take action. But my answer is simple. The moment to take the action is when the opportunity presents itself. You can't create out of, out of nothing an opportunity that, that uh, God has spoken to you about that's going to happen in your future. So when, when God called me to Latin America, there were, many, there were many components to that that I wanted to have immediately. But I've been 20 years getting to where we are today because I was willing to take one step at a time. So although, although there are desires still in my heart that are, that are not fulfilled, I'm going to press toward those on a daily basis, trying to, find the, trying to find the opportunities that are available to me. So knowing the time when God's ready to do something is, I'm going to just be honest with you, is, is about half guesswork. It, it, you know, I, I don't want to spiritualize it and make, and, and make myself sound like some kind of a spiritual guru. About half the time, I'm guessing. Okay, right. I, I hope this is the right step. I'm going to take it, and if the door opens wider, I'm going. That's if it fun. closes, I'm stopping. You know, that, it reminds me of a story because you're absolutely so true. There is not just a spiritual answer, and half of it is guesswork. My wife and I moved to Phoenix, Arizona, this was back in 2012 because we wanted to be pastors or I wanted to be a pastor and we've, we've attended many churches to non-denominational to try to um, come on staff over time and through yeah. relationship and connection because that's pretty much the only way in a non-denominational church to become on staff unless Correct. if you start your own. And so we actually went out to Phoenix to help plant a church. We, put our house up for sale. It didn't sell. So we rented out. We moved out to Phoenix with no jobs. And this was before our house was rented out. We made a wow. stupid, 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 stupid uh, abandonment of reckless faith. Like we left without jobs. We had a mortgage and no one was in to rent the house and pay for it. Like we just hightailed and left. And granted, God brought jobs. God um, brought the renter and everything we needed. But what ended up happening is three months later, we moved back because the jobs didn't work out and other issues within the relationship with the person who we went to help uh, plant the church didn't go well. And we didn't know them beforehand. And I get back and I'm like, I missed God. And I probably did on moving out there. But someone told me this. You can never go wrong putting faith and trust in God. So here's the next question based off of that. Because spiritually speaking, that sounds really good. That it's never wrong to put faith and hope and trust in God. But when I look at that moment in my life, it was a crucible moment. And I'm not quite sure that that was God's will for me to go out there. Yeah. So even though he protected us, how do I reconcile the two where I took complete abandonment faith in hopes to trust God and it was out of sincerity, but more than likely that's not what God wanted me to do. Okay. Let's, uh, let's talk a minute about a guy in the Bible by the name of Abraham. So Abraham gets this word from God. You're going to be a great nation. And let me explain some of this for some of your listeners who may not be familiar with the story. Abraham, who's called the father of the faith. When you, when you get over in the, in the New Testament, we see him 
we see him listed and, and, and declared as, as the giant man of faith. And yet that same guy, in an action of desperation to complete God's plan for his life and prophetic word over his life, he has a son by Sarah's handmaiden, Hagar, because Sarah's not able to conceive, so they take it upon themselves to believe that, well, then I guess the only thing to do is, is to have the son through Hagar. So they do that. Ishmael is born from that union, but the promise is not fulfilled because God said, my, my seed is going to be from, from a guy by the name of Isaac when he gets here. You're still going to have that promised son, but it's not Ishmael. And, and I think that today, Ishmael could still be said to be producing problems for Isaac, who later produced uh, the lineage of Israel. So we see it in Israel today, all the warring, warring nations against them in the Middle East. They're, they're, they're Ishmael. And, and here's what happens is we create our Ishmaels through our desire to move in faith. I, Abraham was a man of faith. But that action was a wrong action because through it, he created future distractions and problems that he would later have to expel from the very land that God had promised him. My wife and I lived in Alabama for a number of years, and, and we tried to leave Alabama, much like you were describing, and, and we were not able to sell our house. And so we made the decision, if, if it won't sell, then we're going to stay. And so it was 13 years. It would, be, it, would be, it would be well over 10 years into our ministry before we were able to leave Alabama and relocate back into, into my home state of Tennessee near my parents who are, who are aging now, and I, I felt it necessary to be near them. So if we had left before God's plan, we don't know what kind of Ishmaels we may have created. But when you move outside of God's plan, you run the risk of creating an Ishmael. You, you've cre you create, like in, in scientific terms, an alternative timeline, an alternate timeline that's, that's paralleling yours. And if you, if you move outside of, of God's plan for your life, and even if you call it faith, Abraham did. He called it faith. And yet he was creating a problem for his future. I, 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 think, it's, I think it's safe to say that when God wants something to happen, he's big enough to make it happen. He's big enough to open the doors for you to go through. And, and that's not to say that there's not times that we have to try some doors and see if they're locked. We certainly do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Try the doors and see if they're locked. And, and at that moment, you'll find out whether it's God's leading you down those hallways or whether it's just you wandering around. 